Hey, it's Rini and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to share with you guys three wall art ideas for your home. I use different techniques for each of the DIYs and I cannot wait to share them with you guys. So before we get started, please subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon if you would like to get notified every time I post a new video on my channel. So let's hop right into the DIYs. For the first DIY project, I grabbed three of these wood panels. These are the Dollar Tree 6x6 wood panels. You can get similar pieces in craft stores or on Amazon. Then I took this cardboard piece which I used as a template. I will be showing this in a bit what I used this template for. So I cut a 4x4 inch square piece and I kept it aside for later use. As you can see, I cut the cardboard piece smaller than the dimensions of the panel leaving a border of around 2 inches on all the 4 sides. Next I grabbed this wood stain in the shade Early American and I started to apply the stain on the panels with a foam brush. If you don't have a wood stain on hand, you can water down some dark brown acrylic paint and apply it on the wood. Or you can also use any color of your choice. Then I wiped off the excess stain with a paper towel. I also stained all the sides of the panel and then I went ahead and stained the remaining pieces. We want to set them aside to dry for at least 5-6 to six hours. Next I took my tub of air dry clay and I laid down some parchment paper so the clay won't stick to the table. I grabbed quite a big chunk of clay and I kneaded it for a few minutes to make it more malleable. Then I placed the chunk of clay between two of these wooden planks and started to roll it out. This step is optional, I use the wooden planks to make sure the clay is rolled out evenly and the thickness is uniform throughout the edges. I kept rolling it until the piece was around a quarter inch thick. And then I grabbed the template which I cut before and placed it on the clay and I cut it out all the way following the edges. I took out the excess and next I grabbed these greeneries to imprint on the clay. You can totally arrange them whichever way you like. For the first piece, I grabbed a small leaf and right next to it I placed a large leaf. Then I took my rolling pin and ran it over the clay working my way up. Now this is the most satisfying part which is removing the leaves to reveal this beautiful detailing on the clay. Then I smoothed down the jagged edges with the help of some water. I grabbed another piece and rolled it out the same way and this time I decided to go for a circular shape so I used a small bowl as a guide to cut through the clay. For this piece I used a different kind of leaf and ran my rolling pin over it slowly to make the imprint on it. The shapes do not have to be exactly circular or square, it's totally fine if they are warped a bit. For our final piece, I took another big chunk of clay and flattened it out with my rolling pin. Again, I used the square cardboard piece as a template to cut the shape. I placed four of these greeneries to make the imprint on the clay. Then I took my rolling pin and gently ran it over the clay. I suggest not to apply too much of pressure while doing this process. Then I smoothed down the edges and allowed them to dry for 2 days. After they dried down, I used my sanding sponge to smooth down any grids on the edges. To paint them, I mixed a little amount of beige acrylic paint with white and started applying the paint on all the 3 pieces. You also want to paint the sides and I applied 2 coats of paint on the pieces and I made sure there's enough drying time between the coats. After the pieces completely dried down, I used a small amount of black acrylic paint and I made it a bit runny by mixing a few drops of water to it. Then I started to apply the paint right on the imprint. The reason why I mixed water to the paint is because I wanted to go for a watercolor effect and I was so happy the way it was turning out. We want to make sure the paint gets into all the crevices. I continued painting on all the three pieces and this project is customizable. You can go for any color you like. I love the black and white combination. I think it turned out really pretty. Then I took this Mod Podge in satin finish and applied a generous coat on all the pieces to protect the paint. Next I grabbed these wood panels and I hot glued the clay shapes right in the center. I made sure there was equal space all the way around so I just eyeballed and glued the pieces on. 
and this is how our clay imprint wall art turned out i love how adorable they are you can make as many pieces as you want and can create a gallery wall with them For the next DIY project, I grabbed this 8x10 canvas. I took my acrylic paint and painted the entire canvas black. I also went ahead and painted the sides of it. And after the first coat dried, I applied a second layer of paint. So I went on to Pinterest to look for some line art inspirations and I made a sketch of this beautiful line art. I will make sure to leave the link to the original pin in the description box. I positioned the art in the center and then I taped it down to hold it in place. Next I used my needle to poke holes on the canvas. I followed the line art and I tried to equally space them out. I tried to leave around a half centimeter space between each piercing. Then I grabbed my acrylic colors to make a color palette consisting of some warm neutrals. For the flowers, I went for different shades of peach and neutral brown. And for the leaves, I mixed white, green and a small amount of beige paint. Also, I filled in the lips with the same peach color. I applied two coats so the paint looks nice and opaque. As we can see, the paint covered some of the holes so I poked the needle again to make the markings prominent for the embroidery. I also used a brown paint to color the center of the flowers. Next, I took a white embroidery floss, tied a double knot at the end and started to backstitch following the pre-poked holes. First, we are going to bring the thread from the back of the canvas and then poke the needle through the adjacent hole and then we are bringing the thread up again through the next hole and go back through the previous one. Then I continued stitching following the needle markings as a guide. The trickiest part for me was stitching the outline of the flowers. It was a bit more difficult than I envisioned. The lines were quite difficult to understand so I kept the reference picture by my side and honestly at a certain point I just gave up and went whichever way I liked without following the needle holes. If you want to avoid that, you can go for a more simple line art. But I didn't mind if it was not an exact match, I think it looked pretty either way. And once we're done stitching all the outlines, we end up with this beautiful embroidery wall art. For the third and the final project for today, I am taking this medium sized canvas. I am also going to need a spackling paste and a palette knife. I started to spread the spackle generously over the canvas. The one I got is a quick dry spackling. I didn't have any other spackling on hand. I recommend using the ones which takes at least a couple of hours to dry because we are going to make different textures on it. So I am spreading the spackling evenly on the canvas and you also want to apply the paste on the sides. Once I am done covering the entire canvas, I am going to divide the canvas into different sections using the sharp edge of my palette knife. So I am dividing the canvas into 5 different sections and you can totally freehand this, the lines do not have to be perfectly straight. For the first section, I am taking a comb and running it over the spackle from left to right creating this texture. 
and for the next section I am just taking a sponge brush and taping it on the surface. I am also using the tip of my finger to add more texture to it. For the next section I am using the same comb to make some arches. The best part about this project is you can experiment with different tools to create different textures. And I decided to keep the last two sections as it is. Here I'm cleaning up the line a bit to make them more prominent. You can always go back with the spatula to add more texture if you need to. And once this dries down, I am going to paint each section with different colors. For the first section, I am mixing together some white, brown, red and a little amount of black to get this taupe color. Also going to paint the sides of it. Then I'm putting some white paint and gently brushing it down to add more detailing. For the next section I am mixing white with a little amount of beige and mustard paint. For the third section I am mixing up white, green and a small amount of beige to end up with this beautiful sage green color. I am using a generous amount of paint for this and we also want the paint to really get into all the crevices. Moving on to the next section I am mixing up different colors to get a dusty rose color and I am going to apply this to the entire section. We are also going to paint the sides with the same color. First, I painted the last section with this beige color but I didn't like it at all so I added some black paint and I ended up liking this so much better. After the paint dried down, I am going to water down 1-2 to two drops of this chocolate brown acrylic paint and apply this with a flat brush on all the sections. This will make the texture stand out better and will also give this piece a more professional and cohesive look. I thought of darkening it a bit more so I added the tiniest amount of black to the watered down brown paint. We don't want to press the brush too hard against the surface, I'm just gently applying the watered down paint onto the textured canvas. I'll continue this process until the entire canvas is covered with the paint. And for the final touches I am taking this gold metallic paint and I am filling in the lines between each section. And I also applied two coats of paint. This finishes off our textured wall art. This piece is totally customizable. You can experiment with so many textures and colors. And if you're not a big fan of colors, you can go for some neutral warm tones as well. For today i really hope you like the diys and if you did please give it a thumbs up and comment down below which one was your favorite you can also check out my instagram at dusty thanks for watching and i will be seeing you guys next time